We got a couple really nice emails from some viewers that I want to share, and then I'm going to show you how you can wire up your ham radio shack with battery backup this time on KMRD Radio Stuff. What's happening, guys? If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email at k8mrd at icloud.com. Guys, let's dive right in. We've got a couple emails I want to share with you that I thought were really nice. This first viewer says, Hi, Mike. I'm the lady who watches your YouTube videos with my husband. So you're the one. <laughs> we met at Huntsville Ham Fest. I wanted to thank you for being my thousandth contact for my POTA award. That is so awesome. That's that's fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, I had a goal to get that award before the end of the year. We had a QSO on 1230 when you activated Galveston Island State Park. Thanks, Mike73, Mary, KA4MLP. Mary, that is fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for, for getting in the log. And congratulations on your thousandth contact. And uh, guys, I just want to say this for all the haters. The mode I was on on December 30th was FT8. Next, I got another email uh, pertaining to 10 meters. This is really awesome because our work is paying off. Uh, Hello, and thanks for the great content. I was looking to get on 10 meters and took your suggestion to ask my local radio club to find a good used HF radio. Wow. Literally just spoke about that uh, on my video on Friday. That's fantastic. Uh, a week later, a club member offered to borrow me a radio, an ICOM 703, with the option to purchase. Now I'm on 10 meters and can't thank you enough for the help. That is fantastic. Uh, and also a huge thanks to Terry for setting me up with the radio and antenna. Good job, uh, Terry. Keep up the great work helping us out. See, that is fantastic. I've said this many times. Look around, ask around, get on the repeaters, get on your local nets and, and go to your, 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 uh, your club meetings. And see, if you're new to radio, you don't have to just spend thousands of dollars on new radios. There's a lot of people with a lot of used gear out there that uh, I know their wives would be really happy if they saw something go out of the shack as opposed to come in. So that's awesome. Congratulations. And I hope to get you on 10 meters. Next, we got the heart of this video. A viewer wrote in asking about uh, battery backup, and uh, he writes, do you have any recommendations for a shack power setup using LifePo 4 battery backup? Most power systems these days assume a lead acid setup, and nowadays a cheap LifePo 4 is very comparable in cost. About 200 bucks on Amazon for a 100 amp hour lead acid, about 50 amps of that is actually usable, yeah. Or a similar cost for a 50 amp LiPo, LiPo 4. Uh, I'm guessing that I would need to run everything at 14.6 instead of 13.8. Is that correct? And are there any good shack power supplies that can run 14.6? So depending on how you want to do this, you don't necessarily need to run at 14.6. But for this example that you're giving, and he's looking at this West Mountain Radio power gate that we're going we're gonna to look into for a, uh, in a second. Uh, but to answer your question about the power supply, let's, let's head over to the internet machine really quick and I'll show you what I use. It is the MFJ4230 DMP. This is what is on my workbench. You see it in every single video where I'm talking to the camera and my workbench is behind me. Uh, it's to the top right of my workbench and that's plugged into uh, a little power pole distribution block. But this power supply can be adjusted from five volts to 16 volts. It's got, I think, two power pole outs on the back and then you can see you've got some, uh, uh, some binding posts here on the front if you wanna do that. And then that little knob right there is where you adjust and there's a detent that should be at 13.8 on mine it's a little off i have to go a little bit past that detent to get to 13.8 but you get the idea so this is the power supply that i use uh by no means is this the only variable power supply that's on the market there's plenty just search you know uh, variable power supply or or uh something of that nature and you should be able to find stuff so what he's asking about, so with this power supply, if you needed to go up to 14.6, absolutely you can. And, and uh, your radios should be able to do, uh, most radios are rated for 13.8 volts, plus or minus uh, about 15%. So plenty fine doing 14.6 uh, volts. So he goes on to ask about this West Mountain Radio uh, Epic Power Gate. And I wanna be very clear before we look into this. At no point, Am I bashing or suggesting that this is not a product that has its worth? West Mountain Radio is a great company. They make great products for amateur radio. Uh, so don't take it as that. This is merely another option. So let's take a look at the West Mountain Powergate and see what it is. 
So here's the West Mountain Power Gate, and it's just a just a box with a couple power poles on it. It sells for $189.95. And basically what this does is uh, it has a solar charge controller in it, so you can plug a solar panel, and then you plug uh, this bottom connector, you plug a battery into, the middle one you plug your radio, and the right one you plug your power supply. And the idea is that uh, basically the electricity is going to flow from the power supply to your radio unless... Uh, the power goes out, then it does some internal switching and then it powers off the battery. So let's take a look at the manual here. And they say the, the Epic eliminates the danger of connecting a power supply directly across a battery, which can damage many power supplies. I assume they're talking about like back current getting back into uh, your power supply. Then they go on to say it connects uh, up to 40 amps at 12 volts DC in a continuous safe manner. It connects a battery and a power supply to the load while electrically isolating both the battery and the supply from each other. So it's got some electronics, I would guess. We don't have a schematic, but I would guess there's a couple relays that are going to do your switching if the power is off. And there's a couple diodes in there that are going to prevent any kind of backflow from like the battery backflowing current into the power supply. I'm guessing. So there's there's something going on here. They also go on to say that uh, the normal voltage is 13.8 to 14.5 volts. It's recommended this voltage be at or slightly higher than the charge voltage for the battery being used. 13.9 volts for a gel, 14.3 for an AGM, and 14.5 for a LiPo 4. A LiPo 4 actually charges up to 14.6. So if you really wanted to top it off, maybe set it to 14.7. Expect the voltage to the equipment to be at approximately this same voltage, which is totally fine, totally safe. Uh, the unit will operate under battery power if no power is on this input. Set the internal jumpers to select the right type of battery or use the USB interface, blah, blah, blah. Then they go on to say that there's a smart battery charger and charging circuit and, and talking about that kind of stuff. But a lithium iron phosphate battery typically will have a... Uh, what's called a BMS, a battery management system, or a PCM, a protection circuit module, built inside, like a BioNO has this circuitry built inside, that's gonna prevent over, uh, it's gonna prevent overcharge, it's gonna prevent over discharge, and it also balances the cells. So you're totally fine just plugging in a power supply, set it to 14.6 volts, and it will charge your battery. The, the internal resistance, once it gets to zero, it's not gonna take any more. Uh, it's just going to stop charging. That's what they do. So we can come up with a really easy solution to make our own distribution, uh, power distribution device. So let's hop over on the bench and I'm going to show you a couple different configurations and how we can do this. Now do keep in mind, uh, there is no uh, diodes in this series. I'm simply showing you how you can wire this. Uh, so, so backflow could potentially still be an issue going into the power supply if the power supply is off. So you might want to put a diode in there just to prevent that. But I'm going to show you how to do this for really cheap. You probably already have this stuff lying around your shack. So let's take a look. Okay, so we've got some things here. We've got a lithium iron phosphate battery. We've got a power cable coming from my power supply that's currently set at 14.5 volts even though that says 13.49, these, these things are not very accurate. And I also have a meter on the battery uh, where the battery is the load. So when we put current into the battery, we'll see uh, the current draw. We will not see the current draw when the radio is pulling power because it's going backwards. Okay, this is just to, to illustrate a point. So now we've got a couple different power pole distribution blocks. This one's from PowerWorks. Works great, I've had it forever. This one I just made by linking a bunch of power poles together and uh, just used some 45 amp power poles and made that. So uh, let's go ahead and use the man-made one just because, uh, but either one of these will do exactly the same thing. All you're doing is distributing the power. So from what I'm seeing from West Mountain Radio, yeah, it looks like there's some kind of circuitry going on, but uh, I don't think it's any, any kind of magic or voodoo. So what I want to do first, let's go ahead and plug in the power supply to our power pole distribution block, okay? Then we will go ahead and plug in the radio, and as expected, the radio turns on, all right? Now, what happens if we plug in the battery? So we're showing about 13.2 volts here on the battery, and if we plug this in, 
Now notice we're putting roughly four amps into the battery. Our voltage is going up because our power supply is at 14.5 volts. So this is gonna continue taking power until it's charged, all right? Now, everything is working in harmony. The power supply is currently powering all of the power for this, all right? But what happens if we turn the power supply off? Just like that. Everything is still on. Notice we're not putting any current into the battery. The voltage is down because there's a load on the battery. We're, again, we're not seeing the current draw because it's hooked up backwards. But right now, the radio is drawing power from the battery, as would anything else. So there's, there's not really a need unless you want that solar to have uh, that power gate that I can imagine. And again, if we watch what happens to the battery, I'm gonna turn the power supply back on. Now we're starting to put current back into the battery. So that's really all you need to do. If you want a battery backup, uh, just get a power pull distribution block. Here, I'll show you with that one. Let's, uh, let's unplug that. Just unplug everything, all right? Get rid of that. Again, here's our source. This is coming from the power supply. Plug it into any one of these because they're all connected. Let's plug in the battery here. Putting current in. Now we're putting nine amps in. And let's plug in the radio. Radio turns on. Life is good. Turn off the power supply. No voltage going to the battery, but the battery is still supplying current to the radio. You don't need these watt meters in line. These are just to show you what's going on electrically. You can just plug all this stuff in. Again, have fuses in line with all this stuff, but it's that easy. Turn the power supply back on. Now we're charging the battery again. It's that simple. And now after some time of just leaving the system plugged in, we can see there's no current going into the battery, which means that our battery is fully charged at 14.5-ish volts. Could really go up to 14.6 with lithium iron phosphate, but whatever, you get the idea. And there we have it. That was very easy. You saw it worked. <laughs> very, very simple. It charges the battery. You probably have some power poles lying around where you could make that thing that I just daisy chained, or if you have that power works thing, or uh, go buy it. It's maybe 20 bucks, 25 bucks for that power pole distribution block. So let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, is, is this safe? Maybe from the electrical engineers out there. Um, I'm sure the keyboard warriors are going to comment too and say we can't do this, but uh, clearly I just demonstrated that we can. So uh, don't forget to smash the like button, thumbs up, share, subscribe, all that kind of YouTube crap. And uh, we'll see you again on another episode of K&MRD Radio Stuff. 73 guys.